Hi, this is Nolan from Benchmark, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your Hemisphere S631 Basin Rover on the internal UHF in Microsurveys Field Genius. So what I'm going to do to begin here is I've just, I'm just looking at my home map screen in Field Genius, and I have two options. I can either hit Select Instrument over here to get to the Instrument Selection screen, or I can hit the plumb bob in the bottom left corner, um, hit Connect, and that's going to bring up my Instrument Selection screen. So as you can see in my instrument type here, I got a number of options and uh, I'm setting my base up first here. So I'm gonna want GNSS reference selected and then my instrument profile I've already set up and paired to uh, my relevant base receiver. So if you haven't done that, I'll include a video in the top right corner on how to do that. Um, but in this case, since mine's already set up, I'm gonna hit connect in the bottom left corner here and that's gonna initialize my Bluetooth connections. So I'm just gonna have my GNSS setup screen pop up here. So if you're doing this for the first time, you will definitely see this and it'll say press the start reference button at any time to configure the reference receiver. Um, this is just a reminder on how to set up your base. If you don't ever wanna see this again, just check this box, do not show this message again. In this case, I'm just gonna hit continue and it'll bring me back to my map screen. So right now it has, it's asking me to set up my base on a known position. Since I'm just setting this up in the office, I'm actually gonna change this to an average geodetic position. Uh, so let me just select that. And now that I've done that, when I hit start reference, it's gonna begin to take a number of positions uh, over time here. So in this case, I'm just gonna take 10 average positions, and then it's gonna bring up my reference position menu, save the average geodetic position to the points database. So in this case, I'm gonna hit yes, and then you can see I got a, my description here. I'm just going to choose from my list here. I'm just going to hit base, sure. I'm going to add this to the automap file, yes. So now I have a description for my point, and it's going to be added to my database. So I'm going to hit store point. Um, and then you can see I've already entered a measured height for my HI. So this is the height of my receiver on the tripod. So if you want to know where to measure the S631 to, I can, again, include a link to another video in the top right corner there. So once I've entered my appropriate HI height into this measured height and I've made sure it's measured to the proper um, position, I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to ask me how I want to configure my um, communications. So in this case, I'm using a UHF radio module. It's the internal one. And then for device setup here, I'm going to hit press to set up. And this is going to bring up all my radio options. So that's going to bring up my radio setup menu here. And I'm going to want to make sure I take note of all the settings in this menu to make sure that they match my rover. Um, if they don't, I will not be able to get a fix. So in this case, I got 450, Satel, Ford Air Correction off, and my transmit power is 1 watt, which is what I want to get the greatest range out of the internal radios. So I'll just hit OK here, um, and it'll save those settings. So once I'm back at the link configure screen here, I'm going to want to make sure that my message type says Hemisphere Rocks. That's going to be the one that gives me the greatest performance with my receivers. Um, and once those all those settings are correctly set, I'm going to hit connect here. So I'll just include a little video here. And as you can see, if I've set my base up correctly, I'm actually going to have both the satellite and radio light blinking about every second or so. Uh, and if you do not see that on your base, you might have actually set your rover up as your base. Uh, just make sure before you set your rover up that you see that light, your radio light blinking every second or you're not going to be able to get a fix on your rover. So once I've set my base up correctly here, I'm going to again hit the plumb bob and then I'm going to hit disconnect and that's going to end the Bluetooth pairing between my data collector and the base. And then I'm going to hit connect again here. And now instead of GNSS reference as my instrument type, I'm going to want to choose GNSS rover. And again, I've already set up my profile. I would check out the, uh, the other video on how to set up your profile if this is not already set up. So once I've done that, I'm gonna hit connect and that'll initialize the Bluetooth connection between my rover and data collector. So now that I'm back at the map screen here, you can actually see that I already have an RTK fixed solution. That's because my radios are already on the proper settings. If you do not see a fixed solution, um, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to hit this wrench and screwdriver here in the top right corner and you're going to want to hit link configure. This is going to bring me to the link configure screen, and it's the same one that we saw for our base. So I'm just going to make sure that I have UHF radio module selected as my device type, device port as internal. And once I have those two set properly, I'm going to want to hit device setup here. I'm going to hit press to set up. And this is going to bring up again all my radio options. That's going to bring my radio setup menu here. And you can see that my channel, protocol, and forward air correction settings all match that of my base radio. And that is why I can get a fix. So once I've made sure all these settings are correct and match my base, I'm just gonna hit okay. 
And once I'm back at the link configure screen here, I'm gonna hit connect and that will set my rover again. And if everything has do been done correctly, you should see your radio light blinking about every second. And then if you have a fixed solution, your satellite light will be solid like in this video I'm just showing you here. Or if you have a float solution, your satellite light will be blinking green. One last thing I need to check before I begin to survey is to check if my HI is set correctly. So it says antenna zero meters here. If I click that, you can see that I can now enter my HI. So in this case, I'm just using a two meter fixed height pole in the office here. So I'm just gonna end two zero. I'm just gonna enter 2.000, um, hit okay. And now my HI has been set correctly. If you wanna know where to measure your HI to, uh, I would check out that video I previously mentioned. And now that I'm back at the map screen here, I can take a fixed solution. So in this case, I'm just gonna take an average of five points um, and then I can store this position to the database. And that's everything for today's video. If you have any questions about anything you've seen in today's video or any questions about switching to Field Genius and the Hemisphere S631, please give us a call at 1-888-286-3204 or you can visit our website at bench-marked.ca.